an opening remark of 20 seconds and then I'll open the floor to the uh, panelists for their opening comment and then uh, we could take the questions. So the, uh, the topic says the power of one, digital media, the power of one. So one for me here is that one vote or the vote, the vote that basically decides the future course of this country. And for that vote to actually translate into an effective outcome, you need the voter or the citizen of this country to be educated and to be aware of making an informed choice. And for me, that is where the role of the media particularly comes, especially when the credibility of the mainstream media was at question. The emergence of digital media is something which has transformed and democratized the whole ecosystem. But what I would like this panel and would uh, my opinion here is that has digital as a means or as a platform just be uh, become more about opinions and more about agendas, more about left versus the right? And somewhere the basic essence of journalism, which was about reporting and speaking on facts, has that, is that something which has taken a back seat? Uh, I think this is something which uh, I would, on this thought is where I'll leave the, uh, uh, my uh, comments and I would request uh, uh, but uh, Madhu, if ma'am, you can uh, throw some light on uh, the, this, uh, this topic and what are your opening remarks uh, and then we could take forward with the questions. Uh, thank you. I really question this power of one right now because people on Twitter seem to think there is nothing outside of the Twitter world. You can have a million followers on Twitter but those are not the voters. I would ask how many farmers are on Twitter? How many rural people of India are on Twitter? So there is a huge delusion going on with this, even the title of this program, Power of One, as if one tweet can change, change the world. Maybe in, in, in Tiny Square, it, it got people together, it can get people together, but to, but to believe that Twitter has power is like living in NTV. I'm sorry, it doesn't. There's a whole world out there which our young people need to address and by abusing people, uh, getting one-upmanship on Twitter, it's, it's a planet by itself and if you get sucked into it and I've seen people in my own team sometimes and I've had to tell them that uh, it's in one of our discussions, we have a weekly discussion called News Laundry Hafta. And this gentleman, a journalist, a scientist actually said, uh, so-and-so did not tweet on this issue. Now, there are many issues that many people will not tweet on, but you, have, you will be accused if you are not sitting 24 hours, 24-7, looking at your Twitter timeline, tweeting on what other people think are important, important issues for you to, to tweet. So I think this power of one is a big um, delusion. And I think people, young people who are so... Uh, uh, busy abusing people and finding uh, labeling people as liptards, sanghis, bhaks, and uh, uh, urban noxials. You know, labeling anybody does, does not define them. The person's own actions define them. You can label anybody you like. It doesn't make them that. That's one thing. And secondly, I do think that uh, there is, because of the anonymity of Twitter, People feel very free to say all kinds of low-level, uh, using low-level language. And when they come face to face with you, they hide under the table. This happened to me. A, a relative, in fact, my sister-in-law, Sangdam, who was busy calling me an urban noxial. When I met her at a family party, I was waiting to confront her. And she kept dodging and dodging and dodging the whole evening. She would not come face to face with me. So I think that anonymity is a big issue that fine, keep yourself anonymous, but remember you are talking to a real person. Um, as far as the government is concerned, there are many ways where, there, where we have understood that there is a lot of self-censorship because nobody wants to deal with the aftermath and the pushback that happens. Uh, we all know that it's happening. We know that uh, certain people have been targeted and I don't know if how many people know and have uh, read this report by Indian Express a year ago and that has been multiplied in fact, which is that there are three departments in the government housed between two, three hundred, uh, three hundred, two to three hundred staff members who monitor one department, monitors only the print, one for TV and one for the digital. 
in that all the journalists and all stories are categorized according to a software which goes into marking us either positive, neutral or negative. This is taxpayers' money, our money being paid to people to watch us. I don't understand the need for it. I don't see why we need to be watched. Let everybody flow. Let everybody write what they like. People are not stupid. I don't think the government needs to be so afraid that if somebody sees a Pakistani channel, that we will believe it. I'm against the banning of Pakistani channels because I think they have so much obvious propaganda and lies that the Indian people should see what they're saying, hear what they're saying. And I don't think we'll be in any danger at all if we watch it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my, uh, I really agree with what Madhu just said. Uh, one should not, you know, one should not get carried away by slogans. Uh, we are living in the age of slogans, uh, so therefore, particularly, one should avoid uh, slogans which uh, tend to uh, tend to create uh, some hyper images about online media or uh, or. Our role uh, in, uh, in, in whatever promoting uh, democracy or speaking truth to power. Uh, my, I, I'll make a, a broad framing uh, uh, remark, which is that I sometimes I'm puzzled that people uh, segment online from you know the, the, the way, for instance, this uh, this seminar itself or this uh, uh, conference itself is designed. Uh, and the way government designs, uh, you know, uh, uh, dealing with media, uh, it, it's uh, it's outreach, media outreach. Even say Congress party recently had, it, it, it called uh, print people separately, you know, TV people separately, online. Uh, I, I, why should there be a, uh, media is media, right? So we, we're all doing the same thing. We're trying to, we're trying to bring news to the people. We're trying to sort of uh, fact check. We're trying to uh, bring uh, research analysis to people. So th this whole segmentation uh, that is going on uh, is uh, is something which is uh, which I, I, I find difficult to sort of digest. Uh, so 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 online media is is, uh, is like any other media, right? So the only difference is uh, we are all dealing with texts and videos, right? So so there's television. So you see. A discussion on TV, you see a discussion on, say, on the Wire, I mean, my website, or, or Madhu's uh, uh, news blog. You see videos there. You see, you see text, video, everything uh, provided on one platform. So, so, so that, so I think this uh, we should avoid this uh, uh, this artificial, uh, uh, you know, uh, segmentation of, of media. Now you come to the real issue. What are these media organizations uh, doing, and what are they supposed to do? So uh, uh, today we have, uh, uh, you know, my, some of my previous panelists talked about polarized debate. Uh, it is true. Today the debate is polarized because the polity is polarized. So so don't look for answers uh, uh, or don't 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 blame media people or look for answers with, inside the media. So why is media debate polarized? When polity is polarized, so 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 media will reflect that polarization polity. Uh, this is happening in the US also. So tomorrow if the polity becomes less polarized, if the middle ground expands in polity, uh, I can assure you that the media will reflect that also. So 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 this blame game about you know who's pro-government or who's anti-government. I think the pro-government guys are playing their role. Uh, Madhu just said we should welcome Pakistani propaganda channels because at least we know what they're saying and then we can uh, will be much more equipped to counter the, uh, you know, counter the propaganda, right? So similarly, you have media which are pro-establishment, uh, media which are anti-establishment. So, so there is no no particular merit need be attached to, you know. Uh, of course, from a people's perspective, uh, Janta wants to uh, have historically uh, likes anti-establishment media better because. Uh, anti establishment media, in some ways, uh, you know, they, they, they kind of they tap into their uh, latent anger if they have a uh, certain, you know, anger against the regime, uh, which we have seen through emergency, which we have seen through Rajiv Gandhi's regime initially, very popular later, how he, uh, the entire media turned against, uh, 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 the bulk of the media turned anti establishment. 
So these are, I think these are cycles. These are natural phenomena. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll just sort of, uh, I'll just end uh, with these remarks. With just two things. Don't segment media. And uh, just look at media uh, in, in, in terms of, uh, basically, it just reflects what is happening on the ground. If the, if the polity is polarized, it will reflect that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so uh, Pankaj sir, your uh, opening remarks and if you could just limit it to 90 seconds so that we could take more of questions is my request. Yeah, I'd love to have uh, some questions. Thank yeah. you very much, PhD Chamber of Commerce, uh, for inviting us. I believe we at the Chamber of Commerce, as I have participated in our debates, uh, is a conglomerate of India's smaller business enterprises. And this is what where the India lives. So. Uh, it's uh, very important that you understand what digital media is doing and how to use digital media healthily and responsibly. Power of one. When I put on my Facebook that I'm going to speak here, someone has sent me WhatsApp. Desh ka yuva, desh ka yuva jaap chuka hai. Ab ye uthega, brush karega, और डेढ़ जीबी डेटा खत्म करें। This is the story of digital India. This is the story of digital media. This is the story of digital news. I've been in digital news now one and a half years. मैं हिंदी में बोलूँ इंग्लिश में बोलूँ। हिंदी, जिसमें भी आप कंफर्टेबल हैं। वो बोलेंगे कि वो सत्तर साल में कुछ नहीं हुआ। हिंदी नहीं बोलते। I can speak in the same language. Where I come from. The power of one. The power of one in digital media is the power of the person who can manipulate digital media. In Russia, it is Vladimir Putin. In United States, it is Donald Trump. In Turkey, it is Erdogan. And in India, it's Narendra Modi. And how this power of one is decided? This power of one is decided by one company. Google. That's one. More than 80% of revenues of business ke log hain, ki samaj hai. More than 80% of revenues of digital media in India, which is rising at the rate of 35% a year. The digital revenue of digital me of media is rising 35% a year, larger, faster than anywhere in the world. 80% of that is being cornered in India by Google. Rest of the companies, Facebook, which has a subsidiary called WhatsApp, Twitter, or uh, Instagram and LinkedIn, vagara, 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 only 20%. But for Google, all these companies get less than 1% of their revenue from India. <coughs> but they have either the largest in the case of Facebook or the second largest consumer base or subscriber base in India. So why would these companies will put in so much resources in one country without any revenue? Do kaam hote hain aap jo karte hain? Ya to paisa aana chahiye? Ya power aane chahiye? And that uh, brings me back to the power. All these companies now have a power over India which no Indian has. Someone before our uh, uh, panel was talking about uh, 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 power uh, <coughs> and how when the government wanted to regulate the digital space, they had to uh, change their mind within a day. Because the power of the digital space is sought by one person. That's why we can't have regulation. We have regulation in India on digital media. We have started a trend in Go News. We became the first member of News Broadcasters Association. Voluntarily, because we wanted to be self-regulated. 
If you don't self-regulate, someone else will regulate you. So this is my message to digital media. And this is my message to all of you sitting here. That either you self-regulate or someone is going to regulate And quickly, how many people here have small businesses which rely on social media? Facebook use karte honge, aap log paati chinja use karte honge, website use karte honge, websites sab use karte honge. So keep an eye on these things because if the government cracks down in India tomorrow on internet or on social media or on digital news, you will be affected. Keep that in mind. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, for me, I have a contention ye hai or uh, that is my, uh, on this contention is what I'll ask question. Is ki, aaj digital media mein ho ye raha hai ki, uh, log apni opinions jada dete hai, agenda jada chalate hai and usko facts se back nahi karte hai. And there is a lot of uh, 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 polarization is something which is happening but which is not backed by facts. And that is why an opinion turns into a rant. So my uh, question here is that if an independent digital media has to survive, it has to survive on two pillars. One is on financial independence and the certain is on media ethics. So uh, my first question to you is on uh, financial independence and financial ownership. Now you've been extremely uh, uh, you've been able to generate uh, uh, funds from a private equity fund like Omidia and still being able to control 70, uh, 60 percent of the equity. But uh, what we basically see is that in most of these digital platforms, the equity is not with the editor. And even though when the equity is with the editor, because the media is so divided, the media is more busy ki ye hamare paksh ka nahi hai, to iske uh, khilaaf jhoot bolein, ya maani jese khilaaf alternative facts salai. Uh, so somehow the real work of media that is reporting is something which is missing. Let me give you an instance. So for instance, the financial ownership I was talking about, there's a uh, TV channel called Republic which was launched. And moment it was, it was launched, everybody was saying that it is being funded by a uh, uh, BJP person, Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Now when I opened the documents, I found out that 80, more than 80% of the equity is with the editor Anup Goswami. And the same Rajiv Chandrasekhar was owning NDTV India, the same amount of shares. So why do you, do you believe that today more in digital is what is happening is different sections of the media are busy in criticizing each other and proving that one is better and not serving the basic purpose which is to report facts and report stories from the ground because as you said that everything is not Twitter, everything is not on Facebook. So why don't I see the mainstream organizations talking about stories from the ground from Gorakhpur and other places and actually backing it by data. Why is, what, what are your views on financial ownership and the question of backing things by facts? <laughs> See, there are organizations and organizations. There is, if you talk about the print media, um, you look at Indian Express's ownership, you look at Hindustan Times' ownership, and you look at Times of India's ownership. Look at India Today's um, ownership. The point is that there are uh, some news organizations where the owners dictate the policy. There are some news organizations where the um, <laughs> owners are hands-off and even equity shareholders are hands off with editorial policy. So uh, I don't know what your question is because if Omdiar has given news laundry funding, they are not controlling what we are going to write and what we're not going to write. They have no concern. They don't ask any questions. They believe that news laundry is the kind of journalism they want to support. So they've given us that money. Our news model is not to keep getting funding from uh, benefactors or whatever you want to call them. Uh, our news model is not to take advertising because we feel advertising in one way or the other influences the way we look at stories and the choice of stories that we do. So if say we take an, uh, an, ad, uh, an ad from um, any commercial company, if we're going to do a story that exposes them, we're compromised. So we started our news laundry with taking no ads. We have a subscription model, which we believe is on the, on the verge of being successful. We get enough um, subscriptions to keep us going. And in this also it keep us, keeps us free from government influence because the biggest advertiser, as you know, is the government. Now I'll give you two examples which happened to come out in an interview that I was doing in an event called the Media Rumble that, that News Laundry does every year. 
um, in that I interviewed Anand Goenka of Indian, Indian Express and Arun Puri of India Today. And I asked them the question about pressures from advertisers. And uh, Arun Puri said that, and I know that he has had many pressures from advertising. In fact, that the Tata Group held back their advertising uh, from the India Today uh, across all channels and their print publications because they ran the Radia tapes and did a story on the Radia tapes and Tata's were offended by it. Um, does that change the way they do their stories next time on any other company? No, they'll carry on doing it. There are other pressures that you get uh, from government as well, which are a phone call here, a phone call there. That does not dictate. It depends entirely on whether you want to lie down, crawl or stand up. There are organizations today in this country who are doing all three. If you don't feel vulnerable, if you don't have anything to hide, there is no reason to, for you to not stand up. The government also realizes that there can be a backlash if they come down too hard on journalists. So usually they go after the owners as we, as we have seen historically. So the question that you're asking me is that how does the uh, ownership influence editorial? It depends on every, from organization to organization. There are organizations who have decided that this is their slant, which is they're going to be leftists or they're going to be rightists. They're openly that. If, like News Laundry, we have proposed and try to maintain that we do not, we, we do not belong to either political party or support any political party, we have within our own news organizations people who are declared uh, uh, BJP supporters, RSS supporters, ARP supporters, and Congress supporters within our organization. But whether those kind of stories go in to promote those things, no. It is our, it is our complete effort to never allow that, to use uh, our website to propagate somebody's point of view. If a BJP or Congress person wants to write an article for us, then it's clear that it is a political party who's writing. But within our organization, it cannot, we cannot allow slanted stories. Just a follow-up question on that and in fact on the subscription model that you spoke about. In fact, you think one of the rarest organization which has been able to thrive on that uh, model. But, uh, but what uh, there are certain other viewpoints that when you are on that subscription model, uh, uh, there are other narratives to it. So for example, there was a recent interview which was done on uh, uh, used laundry and there was a, 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 a teaser or a trailer which was released. And then the whole Twitter was uh, with respect to, okay, fine, this is the whole viewpoint. But then certain people saw the complete interview, I think the guy was Vivek Agniotri or somebody, they were saying that this is not the representation of the entire uh, video. So do you believe that when such questions are asked to you that you're not following the ethic, you're not releasing the trailer which uh, represents the uh, entire uh, interview, how do you deal with that? Is this just rant which is happening or is this merit in these uh, uh, allegations or these uh, viewpoints? Which Look, are this story happened with Vivek Agnihotri coming for an interview to News Laundry to promote his book, Urban Noxious, and his film. There was no agenda. News Laundry didn't have any agenda. It was a normal interview. Whatever happened in the interview, at the end of it, when he saw, when Vivek Agnihotri saw it being played out, which was actually unedited, nothing that he said or our questioner, interviewer said, was cut out. It was in full. He didn't like what he had done because people on Twitter were laughing at him. Okay, so when he became the brunt of jokes for things that he actually said, he reacted by trashing us. And in the, in the midst of all this, we have one, what is a polite word? The Mashmin, that's the politest I could call him, who comes in and takes our interview, the full interview, which is behind a paywall with a subscription model, meaning you pay 150 rupees, you become a subscriber, and then you can watch all the videos. So he pays 150 or 250 rupees and then puts it up on his own on YouTube, which is a copyright infringement, clearly. That is piracy. And then he writes to mislead the public, watch here the complete unedited interview. So when I saw that, I tweeted that if anybody can find anything different in this footage 
from what we have posted, I will give you a free subscription to News Laundry. Of course, there was no difference. But I'm amazed at how many people are fooled by that title and they were giving him Shabashi. Okay, now we've seen the real thing. News Laundry tried to fool us. Well, it was the same thing. <laughs> Coming to the second question about the commercial. For every interview, we take a few bits out of the interview and put it up as a trailer. Now to accuse us, when you look at a trailer and say, this is edited, of course it's edited. You don't put a one-hour interview as a trailer. You don't take a movie or you take any news interview even and put it up, the whole thing. A trailer means taking out bits and pieces. And it is an editorial judgment which you put in pieces which we think will pique people's interest. So what is the accusation? We have done nothing other than put out an interview as it was, run the commercial as it was, and then this the Mashbin takes uh, uh, takes it on his own to make just draw attention to himself. There was nothing that we did that was unethical or wrong. We just ran the interview. He takes it, calls, runs it as, as it was all, calls it unedited, and millions of people believe him. And I question their gullibility. Hmm. So the interviewee was aware that you would be releasing out a trailer and the complete video would be on a subscription? Just last thing. I don't think it was discussed. I don't think it was discussed at all that, you know, we're going to take out an interview. He came, like most people do, they come for an interview. We've been in business in the last five years. We've done hundreds of interviews, thousands of interviews. Never has it ever come out that somebody has objected to what we have done. Never has it ever come out that people have said, why did you run a trailer? This is the first time because the guy is prickly about how he was being laughed at. That's not our fault if people are laughing at him. We didn't ask them to laugh at him. They could as well laugh at our anchor. We're okay with that. And enough people did. Enough made, people made fun of uh, the, uh, the interviewer. That's okay. That's their right. They can make fun of us. Why not? They can criticize us. Why not? But I don't think it's something to get crazy about. It's okay if you're in the public eye. You have to get used to people laughing at you and criticizing you, even abusing you. That's part of the game. That's all right. Uh, so I'll move on to the next question to uh, 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 MK Venu. And I want to del, uh, the, the talk on the topic, uh, subject of fake news. So uh, if you basically... Pradeep, I have to excuse so, myself. Sure. So, I apologize. I have to go to a, a funeral which I cannot avoid. I, my apologies. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your time. Yeah. So just continuing on uh, that you lose my, uh, just a second. <laughs> my question is on fake news uh, and uh, this is a larger topic that I want to discuss with you. And uh, so uh, you've been uh, across, you must have seen that you're running a digital platform. And uh, a digital is an arena where you get a lot of countervailing views, where people tell you that you've been uh, peddling fake news. And uh, that is where the essence of facts come up, right? So my larger question is that our opinions, again, uh, even in the digital era, when we talk about fake news, it is mere opinion which is driving, which gets circulated on WhatsApp. And there is no fact to back it or sometimes there is a mishap. So let me give you an instance, for example, uh, and that happens even despite of a lot of editorial discretion, despite uh, you being able to uh, check the facts. For instance, uh, there was a story on this IT Bombay controversy which was uh, happening. And uh, you had said that, uh, Avaya had taken out a uh, story which said that in, uh, students were protesting against the Prime Minister's speech. Now, when I went to the story, I couldn't see the footnote of, uh, uh, you know, the students uh, signed letter. It was near that certain students had it, uh, were protesting in that manner. So again, I was looking for, as a viewer, as a viewer, my question is, and who are those students who are protesting? Not necessarily the name, but where is that footnote which has happened? So when you get certain um, these countervailing opinions on this front of say on, on instance of Kerala floods where there was another whole article which was going on that an anchor had called of certain anchors had called Keralaites as shame, uh, shameless individuals. But the truth was when I saw the video that respective anchor did not call Keralaites shameless people and but certain uh, news platforms carried that story but did not apologize after they saw the video. So do you believe that A, media organizations, if they find that they've carried out fake news, should apologize for it uh, later on? And second, 
are you thinking that I've seen that more and more it is just opinions of editors and journalists which are driving it, which are sometimes not backed by facts? Well, you see, the fake news is a uh, first of all, I think uh, this fake news is a bit of a misnomer. Journalism has existed uh, through history. People have uh, reported uh, uh, events uh, even before. Uh, you know, pre-industrial times also, uh, pre there was some form of journalism. People used to report events, you know. There they, they would be, during war time, there would be record years, people would take down, you know. I mean, you, uh, in some ways, historians were also al -Baruni, you know, historians who, 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 who uh, you know, who reported wars, for instance, you know. Uh, they, they, they were also, in some, in, in some form, they were journalists. Now, I, I, I take your point that, that when somebody reports an event, it is possible that that uh, that the person may not get the the uh, a 360 degree view of uh, of things uh, at, uh, in, in the first instance uh, because you are also working as deadlines, right? So, so so you could be you could be reporting uh, uh, you know events where uh, you know uh, maybe maybe hundred percent of the truth may not uh, may not come out. So. So if somebody is covering Kerala floods, so at once that reporter cannot have a full view of what's happening in Kerala. So he do some localized reporting. So, 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 so journalists actually they, they, they develop a story. You know? So, uh, so in that sense, uh, fake news is a. I'm very uncomfortable with this term because nothing is fake. Uh, you you are attempting something uh, in in all honesty and good faith and. You you could I mean at the end of it you could be like seventy five percent you could you could explore seventy five percent of the truth not twenty five it can be fifty five percent of the truth if this happened with journalists we are not researchers you know, we don't have the benefit of uh, you know ten, five six years of researching something and then coming up with something you know so so in this regard uh, I uh, I remember this famous quote by Swaminathan Iyer who used with whom I uh, I used to work at the Economic Times so Swami used to famously say that. The journalists, they, you know, with their instant kind of system of doing research and observing things, they they write and they maybe hit what 65 percent of the truth, 70 percent. And he said, he said, whereas PhD scholars with with the benefit of five years of data research, even they never get 100 percent of truth. They probably reach what 80 percent. So he says, I think journalists do a better job in that sense. You know. <laughs> so, uh, uh, when you just to follow up on that and then I'll take a question to Pankaji, just uh, think. No, I, so I'm talking not about the subjectivity, I'm talking about if a story, you report black and it comes out to be white. That is what I'm talking about. If it's a completely uh, 360 degree different thing, don't you believe that if the reality is not said at that time at least, then the next question should come that yeah. why did you report it? Uh, yeah, then, it, correct? then of course, I mean, but if I should, uh, should apologize, I should give a correction, you know. Okay. So, <coughs> so that, I have no doubt in my mind about that. Uh, Pankaji, my question to you is that after this we open it to the floor, is uh, you said that uh, a lot about control in digital media, right? So my uh, counter theory to it is that uh, it is much much less than what it is in mainstream. Uh, there. So, uh, 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 I would look at it in a manner that it is not about that much control, but it is about multiplicity of opinion, it is about challenging the narrative, it is about different people having different uh, opinions and the most viral thing is something which is circulated maximum. Now, when you talk about uh, control, right, when you talk about say the government controlling it or say the, uh, the people inside the political party controlling it, how do you substantiate that claim? How is that claim made? Because if I go on Twitter, I can see democracy under threat also going. I could see uh, a completely different uh, thing pro-government also going. So I get both sides, right? It is for me as a viewer to choose. So why are you making that substantiation that okay, digital is controlled by one party or say one individual or by the government? Uh, see, number one, first I'll pick up the fake news thing. Fake news has become now a, a tool for people to deny truth. New York Times is called fake news by Donald Trump. CNN is called fake news by Donald Trump. In our country, whenever there's something which is not amenable to anyone, be it a corporate, be it a government functionary or someone, it's called fake news. I can call DAVP advertisements fake news because most of them as it turns out after four years were wrong. 
so fake news has become a tool to knock down reporting to knock down in adversarial point of view so that's what's happened with fake news it's happening everywhere it's not just in our country everywhere in the world this is happening so that's about the fake news is what how this fake news thing is playing number 2 Uh, you ask about uh, uh, see i asked you uh, you subscribe uh, you made a uh, uh, about the regulation about the regulation yeah, control yeah, in digital yeah absolutely regulation when it comes to regulation we have all decided people like me and venu and uh, arun shori and kuldeep nayar and arun puri and mj akbar all have gone on protest march at india gate when the government in 1987 was bringing in which was called the black law in bihar okay and since then to now having worked with about eight organizations in different countries one thing is very clear that the only regulation media needs is self regulation okay in india there are too many regulations as we are speaking now there are files about 97 files pending the minister was here i believe in the morning in inb ministry for changes of either names of the channel or the logos of the channel for last one and a half years you can imagine what's happening to those businesses you are all business people that one file if it doesn't move what happens to your business so that is one kind of regulation the second kind of regulation is even if media doesn't have much regulation print or uh, 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 mainstream media as we call it now the social media has become mainstream media because it has more impact and uh, it's more pervasive the trouble in india is that the media houses have started having their own businesses coal ghotale ka naam aapne sabne suna hoga ki coal ghotala hua tha कोल स्कैम कोल स्कैम में सरकार ने 30 से ऊपर जो माइंस थी उनके लाइसेंस कैंसिल कर दिए ओके इट हैड क्रिएटेड अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स फॉर द इंडस्ट्री द कोल वाज लेस द पावर सिचुएशन वाज गोइंग बैड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट सुप्रीम कोर्ट 200 सुप्रीम कोर्ट आउट ऑफ व्हिच 37 बिलोंग टू मीडिया हाउसेस यू बी वेरी शॉक All those media houses are lining up prime ministers of India. Our work is done. Who is the television channel running in Chhattisgarh? Who is the newspaper running in Rajasthan? Who is the multi-edition newspaper running in the whole country? But they are all interested in some other uh, business. So the government can regulate you not in your media business, but it can regulate you on your other businesses if there are any questionable deals. So that is what is happening. <laughs> can, can, can I ask this very important point you said, right? So government can because the owners like have different other business interests. Absolutely. But do, so do you believe or do you advocate that it is the editors who should have the maximum uh, equity structure uh, if it's a media organization? I was just coming to that. Yeah. And secondly, because the digital does not give you that much amount of advertising revenue, so most of these digital platforms are starved by funds, right? It's the Facebook which will decide, YouTube which will decide, or Twitter which will decide how much I as a platform digital should have it. So I think that is where the uh, because uh, is that the root problem? Uh, do you feel that? Just if you could add this aspect, because the root yeah. problem of everything basically is that the media in India has become not a platform for <laughs> dissemination of information <laughs> and facts. It's become a power. लेवरेज दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम किसी के पास में एक अखबार होता है किसी मुफसिल टाउन में तो वो अपना जाकर के डीएम से काम करा लेता है किसी के पास में सौ अखबार का एडिशन है और वो अपना पीएम से काम करा लेता है तो दैट इज वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम इन इंडिया वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड इट एंड हेयर वेयर द डिजिटल न्यूज कम्स इन बज वी आर सी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंटली डिजिटल न्यूज यू रेज द इश्यू अबाउट दैट वाई दीज पीपल है मोस्ट ऑफ द ओनरशिप द एडिटर्स भाई मैं एडिटर हूं वेनू एडिटर है शेखर गुप्ता एडिटर है बरखा एडिटर है मधु जो है वो एडिटर है जब हमको ये लगा कि बड़े मीडिया हाउसेस के साथ में काम करके यू हैव टू कॉम्प्रोमाइज आइदर विद द गवर्नमेंट और द कॉर्पोरेट हाउसेस फॉर एडवर्टाइजिंग गवर्नमेंट फॉर योर रेगुलेशन एंड योर लाइसेंस एंड ऑल दैट देन वी थॉट की लेट्स हैव आवर ओन प्लेटफॉर्म एंड लेट्स डू इट एंड बिलीव यू मी वी आर ए टेलीविजन प्लेटफॉर्म 
and today our what do you call it the bark thing trp no uh, impressions yeah impressions who are daily impressions impressions are 25 million i'm very happy with that i may not be making money but those daily impressions are more than the channel who has been asked today sat tarikh hai na aaj ki sham ko 9 baje apna pasandida ya gair pasandida channel dekhiye aur usme dekhiye ki news broadcasters standards authority ne is channel ko बाकायदा बोला है कि आप एक माफी नामा कॉरेजेंडम अपने चैनल पर 9 बजे चलाएंगे वॉच दैट चैनल एट नाइन ओ क्लॉक टूडे एंड यू नो दैट वाई रेगुलेशन एंड सेल्फ रेगुलेशन डजन वर्क एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू बैड बैड न्यूज इन फैक्चुअल न्यूज यू कैन सो वील चेक दैट uh before us uh, uh, lot of editors were sitting here and talking about very nice things which everyone should channels do not obey the orders of their own self regulating body which is news broadcasters association so what so how can you then say no to the government which wants to regulate you uh, so that is the problem with the news system is here and that's why digital media has become very important lekin digital media ka hal is samay ye ho gaya hai maine aapko shuruaat mein bataya ki aapke paas mein 1.5 gb jo hai wo free mila hai us din aur aap usse khatam kar dijiye shaam ko warna fir wo lapse ho jaye pankaj ji point ye ki agar 25 million hai kuch million digital pe aa bhi rahi hai viewership kya wo itna revenue mein translate hoti hai ki nahi hoti ki ultimately aapko apne employees ko salaries deni hai to aap agar एक उतना स्केलेबल रेवेन्यू मॉडल नहीं बना पाएंगे तो फिर आपके कोई कोई भी एडिटर जो होगा या कोई भी व्यक्ति होगा विवश हो जाएगा दूसरे कामों की तरफ रेवेन्यू निकाल देंगे अगर आप अच्छी पत्रकारिता करेंगे रेवेन्यू की बात ओनर बात करो एज एंट्रप्रिन बात एज एंट्रप्रियर इफ यू हैव गुड इंफॉर्मेशन इफ यू हैव गुड न्यूज एंड गुड न्यूज ये मतलब नहीं है मेरा की पॉजिटिव न्यूज If you have good content, people will buy it. The Economist is getting more money now on subscription digitally than on their print. Uh, New York Times has just crossed their digital edition has just crossed their print edition in terms of digital news. लेकिन आपको अच्छी खबर देनी होगी. अनुष्का शर्मा ने कौन से रंग की साड़ी पहनी? और बिपाशा बासु की ड्रेस क्यों नहीं फिट हुई अगर आप ये चलाते रहेंगे तो जनता देखेगी ताली बजाएगी पैसा आपको ठेंगा देगा और हिंदुस्तान में न्यूज जो है वो नारद मुनि से लोगों ने सीखी नारद मुनि ने आज तक किसी से पैसे नहीं मांगे नारायण नारायण कहते वो इस भगवान से उस भगवान उस भगवान से उस भगवान और वो खबर दिया करते थे सबको और किसी से पैसे नहीं मांगते थे हम अपनी खबर हिंदुस्तान में चाहते हैं कि हमको फ्री मिल जाए तो और जब तक हम ये चाहते रहेंगे कि खबर फ्री मिल जाए तब तक हमको नाराज मुनि वाली खबर ही मिलेगी एक मैं इसी में विनू जी आपका चाहूंगा दैट्स बिकॉज योर योर मॉडल इज मोर ऑन द डोनेशन वर्क राइट सो अगेन आई फील और लाइक कि फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इज देयर एन एपिटाइट फॉर द इंडियन कंज्यूमर टू एक्चुअली पे फॉर कॉन्टेंट नंबर वन एट अ मैसिव एंड रेगुलर स्केल क्योंकि आप अगर कोई खबर चलाए मुझे कोई ना कोई जिस बंदे ने पे किया होगा वो व्हाट्सएप पे फॉरवर्ड कर देगा मैं उसको पढ़ लूंगा सो नंबर वन इज देयर कैन यू कम्पेयर एज पंकज यू इज कम्पेयरिंग की यूएस मार्केट और से न्यूयॉर्क टाइम्स टू एन इंडियन इको सिस्टम बिकॉज यू ऑल्सो आर ट्राइंग टू यू नो बुड स्टार थ्रू द डोनेशन थिंग एंड हाउ स्केलेबल इज द डोनेशन वन नंबर वन सेकेंड ऑफ जैसे मैंने बात की रेगुलेशन की अब उसमें काउंटर व्यू पॉइंट ये भी है कि विमेन जर्नलिस्ट वॉज हरास तो ऐसा क्यों होता है कि मीडिया के अंदर कोई उस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू को नहीं देखा पाते एनबीएसए की गाइडलाइंस कभी क्रिटिसाइज करते हैं कभी नहीं क्रिटिसाइज करते वो विमेन हेरासमेंट वाला जो पॉइंट है मान लीजिए उस चैनल ने एक एफ फाइल की है वो क्यों नहीं एज मीडिया इस मुद्दे पे सर साफ साफ क्यों नहीं हो पाते कि कभी हमको एनबीएससी की गाइडलाइन सही लगेगी कभी अगर मान लीजिए दूसरे कॉम्पिटेटिव एंटिटी के खिलाफ होगी तो हमें अच्छी लगेगी वाई आर वी एज मीडिया सो यू नो डिवाइडेड इवन ऑन प्रिंसिपल इशूज इज वॉट माई क्वेश्चन and also the former question of how scalable that donation can be see i'll tell you about my uh, our experience at the wire uh, now we are a non non profit media so we are a section 8 company uh, but section 8 company has its uh, constraints because you in section 8 your commercial revenues cannot exceed 20% of the donations that you receive so uh, but our experience uh, in the last uh, with 3 years old our experience uh, uh, with raising money from uh, uh, 
crowdsourcing, you know, uh, uh, for funds uh, has been pretty good so far because what we are telling people is we are not we are not allowed to raise commercial revenues, but so we, we are we are telling people that listen, you just pay for good journalism. So we are asking uh, the smaller uh, subscriber who, who would normally be a subscriber in a commercial venture. We are saying that we are, if, if you want our kind of journalism to continue, uh, if, you, if you like our journalism, you give us donations. So. So, in a sense, we are getting a lot of donations from individuals. Do you yeah. think the donation thing is something which can be scalable? And when people donate, I'll, I'll tell you why it is scalable. There is a uh, it's scalable on, on one condition, uh, and, and I'll tell you the condition also. Uh, uh, there is a there is a growing uh, uh, you know there is a growing rank of uh, high net worth uh, middle class entrepreneurs who are willing to, uh, f you know, f fund uh, donation-based models. This is philanthropy, which is, which uh, uh, you know, philanthropic funding is on the rise in India. And I'm, 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 I'm telling you from experience, people, uh, there is a very enlightened uh, opinion amongst, uh, amongst, you know, high net worth individuals, especially in the south of India. I, I, I'll again, I'll qualify. Because most of our money comes from, uh, you know, tech entrepreneurs who've done well in their uh, and who are worth maybe who may be worth fifteen million dollars, twenty million dollars, you know, sometimes you know even a billion dollar plus, uh, and they are first generation entrepreneurs, and they they very strongly feel uh, that that India needs uh, business models, uh, media uh, platforms which are not controlled either by the top five big business houses on the one hand or the government uh, on the other. You know? Either you're not dependent on too much government advertising or you're not being controlled by the top five or six uh, big business uh, houses. I don't need to name them. Uh, they control 70% of the media. So <laughs> so, so, so th there is a uh, uh, so I, there is an awareness that uh, that that uh, that a non-profit, uh, you know, uh, donation-based uh, uh, media uh, should be encouraged. And so far, I can tell you our experience, uh, it has been very good. Uh, you know, when, and, and, and number two, that's the second condition. Yeah. Uh, you have to keep your costs very low. Okay. The reason why media economics has gone completely haywire, starting from the top, you know, the, the biggest media organization has recently seen 70% fall in uh, profits, right? So it, or no television channel standalone is actually viable today because high costs, you know, payments, people are getting paid like, you know, the, the owner of some media organizations, I mean, pay the salary of a CEO of a Hindustan Lever, doesn't deserve it. I'm telling you, doesn't deserve it. That would be okay. Yeah. yeah? So that's, that's one way of looking at it, right? And our, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, but one bit of data which will shock you. Our total salary, we have 40 people in the wild. Our total salary is equal to the salary of three top editors in any mainstream paper you can take okay. or any TV channel. I need to, I so need to tell you on that because you need to go to the questions and we know that we just have to wrap up quickly. But uh, my, just a small thing, but when these people pay, do they ask you, is tarike ki khabar chalana? Do these people, when they pay, they say, yeah, oh, be anti establishment, okay, be this type, be no, no, it's not it's, it's, it's this thing. They, they, they come on online, okay, Insta Mojo. Okay, and and they, they, they love our journalism. Okay, they love your uh, journalism. And on the English. That's because we... I'll tell you why. Because we speak truths to the power. Okay. So you all... Uh, the, the Amish Jesha story, yeah. I can guarantee no other paper in this country would have published it. That, that's why they're for funders. Okay. So, uh, uh, I will open this floor uh, to two questions. Yes.